Dr. Paul Conant dropped by our studios to update our viewers on the amazing success that scientists are having worldwide in their fight to educate governments and the population to the deadly toxic waste poison fluoride being added to our water. This has been an eight-year effort on our part to demonstrate that they cannot introduce this sulfur fluoride for the treatment of food and warehouses and processing plants because our kids are already exceeding the reference dose, the safe dose. Dr. Paul H. Conant is our guest and he is a environmental chemist and of course a toxicologist and has been a prominent critic in the US and around the world uh, since he first researched exactly what uh, the so-called substance fluoride is doing, being added to our water, but also being used uh, as a pesticide. And we had him in here uh, just uh, four or five months ago in studio with us. And since then, so many positive things have happened. And I wanted to get him on to discuss the EPA has proposed a phase-out of fluoride-based pesticides. That's the New York Times. Uh, other reports, uh, U.S. wants to reduce fluoride in drinking water. Uh, the government's had to continue to admit that internal ingestion of fluoride does nothing for your teeth. Uh, it's only topical, and I've you know, made the point many times, it's like drinking sunscreen uh, instead of just putting it uh, topically on. And, and so there's major cracks in the facade. He's just returned to the United States from a trip to uh, Australia, New Zealand, and other nations. He just got back. Uh, last night, and he's here in Austin, Texas, uh, tomorrow to speak to the Austin City Council. So positive things are happening all over the world, and he's here to give us a report on that. Dr. Connor, thanks for coming in. Well, thank you, Alex. You know, water fluoridation is not the most important issue confronting our planet, but it's the easiest one to end. All you need is a strong wrist to turn off the tap. Once the tap is turned off, it's over. But you need the political will to turn the tap off, and to get that political will, we need people informed and we need people organized. Thanks to you, millions of people around the world are being informed on this issue. And thanks to uh, Fluoride Free Texas, thousands of people in the city of Austin are being informed about the issue and organized, being organized on the issue. So we, we're keeping our fingers crossed that Austin, Texas will be our next big victory. A few days ago, it was finalized that Calgary in Alberta, that's 1.1 million people, are now going to be fluoride-free and uh, after 20 years. And people in Waterloo, Ontario, voted it out. So the squeeze is on Ontario. And don't forget that most of British Columbia and most of Quebec, the wings of Canada, are already fluoridation-free. And we're squeezing on Alberta with Calgary out, Edmonton may be next, and then we're squeezing on Ontario. If Ontario was to go, if Toronto was to go, or even Ottawa was to go, I think it would be the end of fluoridation in Canada. Meanwhile, we've got a very good organizing group in New Zealand. FAN New Zealand is excellent, and FAN Australia has just been, been formed. So there's a fight back everywhere. And then a few days ago, I was in Dublin, which is mandatory fluoridation. Because of American pressure back in the 1960s, Ireland has mandatory fluoridation. It's the odd man out in Europe. Only three countries in Europe have any fluoridation at all. England at 10%, Spain at 3%, and Ireland at 73%. But lots of people in Ireland don't want this fluoride in their water. But many other people don't know it's there. Now, you've been talking about some of the big cities that are going fluoride-free. I've, I've seen reports like towns outside Austin, like Lago Vista, right. uh, uh, having it removed. Other cities not putting it in. Big fights in places like San Diego, uh, where they've had to uh, you know, bring in supposed private money to do it. Uh, I briefly uh, want to give people a recap of just some of the basics of the danger yes. uh, of fluoridation and how discredited it's gotten and what it signifies for you that this facade of you people are crazy uh, is beginning to fall in because I've seen the reports of the majority of government scientists and unions sending in their own letters, toxicologists, environmental chemists saying this is insane, the increases uh, in, in bone cancer, uh, the uh, fracturing of the bones, the dental fluorosis. I mean, it's, it's such a hoax. Uh, but before we uh, go there, uh, you also gave me some very positive news earlier when we were talking about what's happening in the state of Georgia. Yes, um, some very prominent 
black leaders. Uh, Andrew Young, former ambassador to the UN, former mayor of Atlanta, whose father was a dentist and for years was pro-fluoridation, came out with a public statement a few days ago calling for an end to mandatory fluoridation in Georgia. And the reason is that they're now finding that black children are much more sensitive, appear to be much more sensitive to fluoride for a number of factors. For example, the rates of dental fluorosis, which is caused by fluoride, mottling of the teeth, is greater for black children and Hispanic children than it is for white children. But the parents are not being warned. You know, in terms of the basics, probably the single most basic fact that anybody needs to know is the level of fluoride in mother's milk. You know, what was developed over millions of years by evolution, Mother Nature, however you, you saw the development of humankind, this is baby's first meal, which is designed to be the best delivery of all the things that the body needs, right? And it's practically none. The, the level of fluoride in mother's milk is 0 0.004 parts per million, which means a bottle-fed baby is getting, with, in a fluoridated town like Austin, is getting 250 times more fluoride than nature intended. And then you have these lunatics, these, these people that are more interested in money than, than protecting our babies or our health, selling ba for babies, for baby, look, for baby, water, so-called purified water, which has fluoride added to it. So they're deliberately giving babies 250 times more fluoride than nature intended. And they push it in the public schools. They've got dozens of brands. They've got it in packages, little school buses on the side. This, this uh, is... You go to grocery stores or baby stores, there's giant end caps. Uh, they've got recordings playing. Your baby needs it. They've got yeah. to have it. But you just broke down the facts, and, and I've read the statistics. Go over some of them. Uh, am I correct, Doctor, that the studies show uh, these different f uh, fluoride types have a much more adverse effect on babies and the developing? Yes, it's, it's the first year which is the most sensitive year. According to government-funded researchers from Iowa, it's the first year in which the baby's at greatest ri risk at developing dental fluorosis. And we've got a huge problem now in the United States, 41% of children between the age of 12 and 15 now have dental fluorosis. Now that's all American kids. That's an average of kids living in fluoridated communities and non-fluoridated. And that's up from? From 10%. Um, 10% was, was where they began in 1945. That's what they thought. We can fluoridate the water, lower t at one part per million, lower tooth decay, and we'll keep the dental fluorosis at 10% in its very mild form. Now we have 41%, probably 50% in fluoridated communities, and 3.6% of those have moderate or severe dental fluorosis. And, and, and from the studies I've read, but correct me if I'm wrong, this is, this is the surface effect uh, and so this is what we're seeing, but, but the studies on IQs, on bones, you can't, bone cancer... You, you can't see them unless you do a study. You can't walk down a road and tell if, if someone's had brain damage, whether their IQ's lowered, whether they earlier on set a puberty or any of these other things. You can only, only find that was caused or, or not by fluoride if you do the studies. And we're just not doing the studies in this country. We're not doing any studies to see if there's a relationship between fluoridation and arthritis, even though we know the first symptoms of fluoride poisoning of the bone is just like arthritis. We're not looking to see if there's a relationship between fluoridation and the massive increase of hypo-underactive thyroid gland, even though doctors used to give fluoride tablets to lower thyroid function in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, very low doses, by the way. We're not looking to see if there's a relationship with fluoridation and lowered IQ, even though we have 24 studies now from China, India, Iran, and Mexico, which shows that moderate exposure to fluoride is lowering IQ in children. Well, that was my next point. You're saying we're not studying it because this is the home of fluoride where it began. You live here in the United States as well, but all these other countries have, and we know that the teeth turning into pot-eaten, you know, yellow uh, uh, wrecks, that's only the surface effect, the that's brain. Right. That's the, right. That. What about glands in the brain? I've... Yeah, the pineal gland, this little gland between the two hemispheres of the, of the brain, it concentrates fluoride because it's a calcifying tissue just like the teeth and the bones. And the, the researcher that did this, uh, somebody I've met several times, Dr. Jennifer Luke in England, she also showed that animals lowered melatonin production. And this pineal gland produces melatonin, which is like a biological clock. It controls the start of different things or end of different things. It controls the onset of puberty, aging, uh, jet lag, which I know something about, <laughs> and sleep patterns. 
Uh, so it's an incredibly important gland, and yet no country, no fluoridating country, has attempted to reproduce her work, and it's not. But just... strangely enough, uh, in the studies I've seen, uh, levels of fluoride are known to accelerate puberty and, and basically aging, and then we wonder why, amongst the other hormones and, and things that are in the meat, uh, that our girls are going into puberty at now, now not just six or seven or eight, but yes. three years old in many cases, yes. and it, it and it's... Uh, you see the areas of the world where fluoridation is going on. We have these hot spots uh, of uh, the boys being effeminate and the women uh, going into puberty earlier. But the point is, from a scientific perspective, if you don't look, you don't find. And, and the absence of study does not mean the absence of harm. And, and unfortunately, what is being done in the United States, particularly by the Center of Disease Control, is to essentially say, oh, we're not finding any effects at one part per million. Well, you're not looking. There's a, I know you're a fan of Monty Python, as I am. And we had Dr. Peter Cooney, who's the, the, um, the chief dental officer for Canada. He went into Dryden, Ontario, shortly before they voted fluoridation out. That's another victory. He said, I've walked down your high street today, and I didn't see anybody growing horns, horns, and you've been fluoridated for 40 years. So that's the level of research in Canada. You know, come in, John Cleese. Well, John, what are we going to do to study this fluoridation thing? How can we demonstrate to the public? He doesn't have any horns. We'll just, He's we'll, fine. We'll, we'll, we'll have a whole department. We'll have, we'll have a specialist in deer horns, moose horns, goat horns, bull horns, cow horns. Rabbit horns. We'll, we'll, have to, we'll cover the country. And you, if we see horns we growing, know. we'll cut no. that floor right, that's out. It, that's it. That's it, John. Jolly good. You got it. You got it. Hold on. What about forking tails as well? Yes, you forked tails. Absolutely. And by the way, John, what do you think about um, getting rid of this hazardous waste from the phosphate fertilizer industry? Well, we'll just put it in the water. And if they complain, we'll say, if Easter bunnies spontaneously uh, appear, then we'll take it out. <laughs> so you got it. I mean, can you, is it any, can you think of anything more bizarre than the hazardous waste of the superphosphate fertilizer industry? They can't dump it into the sea by international law. They can't dump it locally because it's too concentrated. But if someone buys it from them, it becomes a product. And once it's a product, then they can put it in the drinking water and tell us it's good for our teeth. Well, expanding on that, I mean, you say they haven't studied it here, but they're there have been studies all over the world, and there have been studies of what higher levels of fluoride do. And we know yes. it's d deadly poison and it attacks the body at every oh, yeah. uh, level. I mean, you've spoken about how it's really an adjuvant. It also accelerates all the other toxins. And, and if it's something that bioaccumulates, uh, then we do know it's bad. It's crazy. Well, f first of all, you know, going back to real basic common sense stuff, the whole notion of using the public drinking water to deliver medicine is crazy because once you put a medicine in the water, you can't control the dose. You, you can control the concentration at the waterworks, but you can't control how much water people drink and you can't control how much fluoride they're getting from other sources, so you can't control the dose. Ask any pharmacist. This is sheer lunacy. But, but that's my next point. Uh, you were uh, earlier when we were talking on the radio breaking down how they gas the food with fluoride, and they also have systems where they spray it on. Yeah. And uh, many of the doctors I've talked to over the years said, look, water's bad, yeah. but, but this is where they're really putting the toxic waste. Well, now, uh, going back to January 10th, uh, absolutely, of this year, um, four or five months ago, EPA proposes phase out of fluoride-based pesticide uh, because we're dealing with hundreds of times what they're putting in the water. Uh, but the fact that they're now starting to back off on this, why do you think that's happening? Well, it was an amazing victory for the Fluoride Action Network with help from the Environmental Working Group and Beyond Pesticides. This has been an eight-year effort on our part to demonstrate that they cannot introduce this sulfuryl fluoride for the treatment of food in warehouses and processing plants because our kids are already exceeding the reference dose, the safe dose. We know that. They're already over, uh, overexposed to fluoride. So you... The, the way the pesticide division works, they establish a reference dose, and the com combination of the, of the pesticides plus the background must not exceed the reference dose. But if you're exceeding the reference dose before you've added a speck of the pesticide, then clearly you can't do it. They try to change... Again, fluoride as a pesticide. Yeah. Because yeah. it's so good for our children. <laughs> the, the, uh... This is hiding in plain view. <laughs> 
We need to give the children a pesticide. What type of conspiracy theorists are you? I don't see no whores going there, Governor. Yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. But they changed the reference dose three times to try to accommodate Dow AgroSciences. And when we threatened to take them for court, we had a wonderful lawyer, pro bono lawyer in Washington, Perry Wallace. And we said, OK, if you don't respond to our appeals, this has been going for eight years. We've been appealing and intervening. I've had you on. You never bragged that it was your group that did this. Well, it's my wife. My wife was the person that forced us all to pay attention to she was the one that came to you and and showed it to you and you said that's crazy then you read the documents that's right 15 years ago she put these papers on my desk and said paul will you read these i said what is it she said fluoridation i said take that away these people are crazy i was very embarrassed when she finally forced me to read it it's not these people that are crazy but some of the uh, people in the, in the government who are crazy the, you know what um I've tried to work out for 15 years. You notice in our book, it's the last chapter, trying to understand motivations. Now, for the, the rank and file dentists and doctors, it's very simple. They're too busy treating patients to read the literature. Most of them don't. You've got a wonderful guy in, in Austin, Griffin Cole. He's a dentist. He has done the, read the literature, and he's very much opposed to it. A very important man, Griffin Cole. But most dentists and doctors don't have time to read the literature. We do, of course, three professors here retired professors at, at that. Then you've got the people in the middle of the bureaucracy. Basically, they are trained not to question policy. Policy is determined in Washington or in the... It's state. like the military. They follow that's orders. A, they follow orders, literally. And the CDC, remember, is in uniform. It's a uniform branch of the, of the, the, um, the Department of Health and Human Services, CDC. They're in uniform. Surgeon General. Surgeon General. It, as you say, it's a l chain of command. So don't expect the middle bureaucrats. Don't expect the health officers in the cities. To and then the big chemical companies, they lobby the politicians that give the orders to the bureaucrats who give the orders to the unquestioning minions that then put it in our water. And meanwhile, it's a pesticide. I mean, they had a guy in California a few months ago who went to a house that was being gassed to kill bed bugs. Yeah. He walked in, a homeless guy, for like a minute, and it and killed him. Good. And it yeah. killed him. And it said... Yeah. And That's it, the same stuff. That's sulfuryl fluoride. Yeah. Being used, Vicane, being used for years to fumigate buildings. So this is simple. He walked in and seconds was dead. That's right. And, and, and this is what they're pumping the food with. And, and you were talking about the numbers of what gets in white flour and things. Yeah, the, the level in the flour that was being permitted by the EPA was 125 parts per million. And that flour wheat flour goes into dough, pizza dough, bread, cookies, cakes, and so on. And there's no doubt that's to kill bugs. <laughs> so, so, so you're eating something that's meant to kill bugs. Now, yeah. I'm no rocket scientist, yeah. but, uh, I mean, that's insane. But, but the, 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 the top of the chain of command, I, I went to the bottom, in the middle, what about the top? What's the motivation of these people in the Center of Disease Control, etc., Department of Health, Kathleen Sebelius? Why do they keep this going? For me, it's the fear of losing credibility. They have waxed lyrical so much for so long about this practice. I think they fear that if they lose fluoridation, they lose credibility. If they lose credibility, they lose other, the public's trust, which threatens other public health well, policies. Well, this is the same government that secretly injected black people with syphilis. Yeah. And now it's come out they were doing it in Latin America and the atomic soldiers. I mean, these people have no credibility. And, and I agree with you, Doctor, at that level, at, at you know the top policy wonks, but yeah. they're taking orders from people like John P. Holdren and uh, people he admired uh, uh, before him who all wrote about putting things like this in the water to reduce fertility. Mm -hmm. And we know it reduces fertility. Mm -hmm. And we know that they see us as animals, as a uh, scourge upon the earth, and that's what my film, Endgame Blueprint for Global Enslavement, covers, is their own statements. This is being done by design. I know you only stick with what, yeah. you know, the actual chemicals. And I would, I would make a distinction between the, 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 the dentists and, and doctors out there who are usually very decent people. They're compartmentalized. Yeah, yeah. they do not. I don't think they have any, any notion other than Florida, what they've been told, that fluoridation is good for teeth. Uh, and that it's perfectly safe. But, I mean, I know you don't like to talk about it, but off record here on camera, uh, I mean, the whole eugenics angle. Uh, uh, I mean, have you seen those quotes and statements uh, where they, uh, even in the 40s, talked about how they needed chemicals and, and they decided on fluoride? Yeah. No, I haven't, haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. But I, I try to put that to one side because we have them on the ropes with the science. You know, the best... The best study they've ever done on tooth decay in the United States. They looked at 39,000 children. 
in 84 communities. And what did they conclude? That if a child had lived all its life in a fluoridated community compared with a child that lived all its life in a non-fluoridated community, there was a saving, average saving for 5 to 17-year-olds of 0 0.6, 0 0.6 of one tooth surface out of over 100 tooth surfaces in a child's mouth. And you have to say to yourself, is this world crazy? Are, are we doing all this to save 0.6 of a tooth surface? Are we going to threaten their brains, lower IQ, bone damage in adults, arthritis, lower thyroid function, all these possibilities mm. to save 0.6 of one tooth surface? It doesn't make sense, does it? And, well, and no, at the end of the day, they've got a toxic waste they can't get rid of and taxpayers end up paying to have it put in their water. In closing, because in a few minutes you've got to leave here because yeah. you've got to go to the Austin City Council. Uh, th that same day, back on January 10th, 2011, uh, when they said we're going to phase out fluoride as a pesticide because yeah. uh, it's so nutritious for your children, U.S. wants to reduce fluoride in drinking water from 1.1 part per million to 0 0.7. What does that signify? It signifies that they, they've having to come back with some kind of way to absorb all this mounting opposition to fluoridation around the country. It's like a, uh, it, it, point 0.7 is still too high. I mean, it's 175 times the level in mother's milk. So we really haven't made an advance. But it looks as if they're doing something. It looks as if they care. But on the same day, the Office of Water of the EPA said, we are going to determine a new safe drinking water standard, which will protect our children's health and protect the water fluoridation program. And we're saying you can't do both. You can't keep water fluoridation going if the object is to come up with a safe drinking water standard which protects everyone. Well, how can they everywhere put out water for babies and tell mothers, give this fluoridated water to your baby, when going back six years, the American Dental Association said don't give fluoride toothpaste to kids under six, uh, when what they came out in 99 and admitted it doesn't do anything good when ingested, uh, it's only topical. I mean, they know this. I guess it's some gimmick. Well, the trouble is the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, has never approved fluoride for ingestion. They've washed their hands of this. They don't, it's an unapproved drug. And so these companies, I guess, can get away with this because the FDA is not watching, is not doing its job. This wouldn't pass the FDA. Hey, I've got an idea for all these companies to put it out because I know you're watching. How about you come out with purified water with no additives for your baby, or purified water with added minerals, no fluoride. Yeah. I'll guarantee you, just like 10 years ago, all the milk had the, the uh, growth hormone in it, and in a few stores started getting real organic milk, and now you can't find the non-organic milk. I guarantee you, water producers, you put out a bottle saying no fluoride, because I know most of these companies just want to make money, you're going to make a boatload of money. Yep. And the reason I'm giving you that great idea is because I don't like brain damaging children. You care about money? I care about kids not being brain damaged, okay? So uh, still, you're selfish and evil. You know what you're doing. Why don't you go ahead and advertise it's fluoride-free? You'd make a lot more money than going along with this evil you know, bandwagon. In fact, the company here in, in Austin, Texas, is putting out a product. It's called Pure Rainwater. This is rainwater from Oregon, which then goes through... Uh, extra treatment. So yes, there is a demand for pure water, for clean water. The only thing I would urge people to do if they get water which has got everything taken out of it, make sure you buttress it with the nutrients that you, you need. Because if you need the minerals, you need the minerals, you need the calcium, you need the magnesium and so on. So now that's the problem with reverse osmosis. Well, Dr. Conant, I just want to say great job uh, in closing. Um, it's they're not studying it here, but we do have studies all over the world, prestigious studies on the IQ issue. Close with that, because this is this is incontrovertible facts. We have just got two studies out. One was a, um, an update of a study done in 2003 by Zhang and co-workers from China. And I visited the village is where this study was done, by the way. And he showed that there's a relationship between the amount of fluoride in the plasma of the children and the lowered IQ. So as the level of fluoride in the plasma goes up, the IQ of the children goes down. So that brings it closer to individual dose, not whether they live in this village or that village, but how much fluoride they actually were exposed to. This is relating to IQ. And another study which published just a few weeks ago by Ding and co-workers, they looked at very low levels, 0.3 to 3 parts per million. They find lowered IQ 
in that range of 0.3 to 3 parts per million. Well, this overlaps the range that we use in the United States, 0.7 to 1.2. So this completely knocks out the notion. And there's a lot of other studies. Those are just the new ones. We also have studies uh, of animals. In other oh, parts of the over world. 100 animal studies. Yeah. Over 100 animal studies. There's no question. Oh, the EPA itself, the Department of Neuro toxicology, I've forgotten the full title, has said that fluoridation, there is substantial evidence that fluoride is a neurotoxicant. Substantial evidence that fluoride is a neurotoxicant. And here we've got this stupid company putting a, a thing into the water for which the EPA says there is substantial evidence that fluoride is a neurotoxin, damages the brain. Amazing. We'll leave it at that. Dr. Conant, uh, give us the website. Fluoridealert.org. Make sure you spell fluoride, F-L-U. Think of flu, fluoride, not fluoride, fluoridealert.org. When you go there, you can see how to get hold of this book, The Case Against Fluoride, and also you'll find a videotape there called Professional Perspectives on Water Fluoridation. It's only 28 minutes long, 15 scientists, three from the, from the, the guys who wrote the National Research Council report, two former EPA uh, scientists, a Nobel Prize winner, several other scientists in 28 minutes. If that doesn't convince you that you've got to stop fluoridation in Austin, Texas, and everywhere else in the world that this program goes, I don't know what would do it. Yeah. If, well, these... well said. Uh, no army can stop an idea whose time has come, as Victor Hugo said. And just great job. We are definitely on the march, and the empire is on the run. Uh, Dr. Connick, God bless you, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com. Please spread this video to the four winds. We've got a lot of people to warn. Thank you for watching. Ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds? Go to InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv for the latest headlines and cutting edge information.